Welcome! In today's video, we are talking with the one and only Super Mario. This is part three of season two, where we are discussing some ship specific questions within the Royal Caribbean fleet, diving into what ship is his favorite, what ships have he been on, and so much more. So if you missed the other two segments prior to this, make sure you go back and check those out as well. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alana, and I'm all about cruising, Disney, and weekend getaways. So let's dive right in. Mario, let's dive a little bit into some ship specific questions. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about Royal Caribbean's fleet, adjusting to all the different uh, ships in the fleet. So let's start off as, what is the smallest ship that you've been on? Have you been on every single ship within Royal Caribbean fleet? Royal Caribbean segments its fleet into six classes. And we talked about this in a prior segment, correct? Yes, we did. Okay, so you got from the smallest to sort of the medium size, to the larger ones and to the giant ones, mm -hmm. right? So let's start with the smaller ones. There's two ships that are the smallest ones. One is the Empress of the Seas. The other one is the Majesty of the Seas. Now, they both sail out of uh, either Miami or Fort Lauderdale, and they do mostly uh, four and five day cruises, okay? Yeah. And these are the two ships that they're currently using to uh, sail into Cuba, okay? Because Cuba has space limitations. They need a smaller ship for that. Yeah. Correct. So Empress and Majesty. And these are the, the two oldest ships in the fleet. Mm -hmm. Not only the smallest, but the two oldest ones. Okay. Then you move up to the next class of ship, which is the Vision class. Mm -hmm. In the Vision class, you've got right now four ships. You've got the, uh, the Grandeur of the Seas. You've got the Enchantment. You have the Rhapsody and the Vision. And these are fairly, you know, by today's standards, they're small ships. Right. They really are. Mm -hmm. They're not yacht-sized ships, but they're smaller than the average ship, let's say. Then you move up to and the next- And you've been on all of these ships. I've been on all of them. So you've been on every ship in the fleet. Except for, for two. Oh, what are those two? Well, the two new ones. Ah, oh, okay. That I haven't had a chance, the Spectrum, right? Yeah. And the Ovation. Oh, okay. Okay, those are the two that I haven't been on because they're basically in Asia. Right. They're in China, so I'm not gonna fly to China just to say I was on them there. Right. All right, so but of the 20, right now the fleet is 26 mm -hmm. ships. Of the 26, I've been on 24. Okay. So I can pretty much give you the, the data. All right, so then you move up from vision class, and vision class ships normally sail in the, in the summer, they're all pretty much in Europe. Mm -hmm. Not all, but pretty much in Europe. In, uh, because these ships are all, they're Mediterranean type ships, but they're also Caribbean in the, in the winter. They come to the Caribbean, all of them. Yeah. Okay, then you move up to the Radiance class, which I call the Radiance class, they call them ships of light because they have a lot of glass. Glass elevators, a lot of glass in the, on the inside where you can see out. Right. And these ships were made basically for Alaska. The Radiance class, Radiance class ships. Yeah. They're, you know, they're Alaska type ships and Mediterranean as well and Baltic. So they use them for those, those three markets and off season in the Caribbean, of course. Mm -hmm. Then you move up to the Voyager class, which is where we are, the Navigator. Voyager class was introduced in the year 2000 with the Voyager of the Seas being the first one in the class. And you got Voyager, you've got Explorer, you've got Adventure, uh, Navigator, and Mariner. Mm -hmm. and, and these ships are basically Caribbean type ships, you know, right. even though they, they go other places. Uh, it's ba basically for the Caribbean. And uh, right now you've got Mariner and Navigator doing short cruises. Yeah, three, four night cruises. Three, four night cruises to the Bahamas. So they're using them for, for short cruises. Um, then you move up to the next class, which is Freedom Class, which Freedom Class is basically Voyager Class on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been on a Freedom Class ship, you know what I'm talking about. Right. It's the same design, same layout, same venues, but stretched out 100 feet longer. Mm -hmm. The ships are 100 feet longer than Voyager Class. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same. Right. Pretty much the same. And that's your favorite class size, right? Yes, Freedom Class is my favorite class size. Exactly. It's on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then once you go past Freedom Class, now you're going into 
the, the really, really big ships. Uh, but not the biggest ones is the Quantum class. The Quantum class uh, is, is bigger than the Freedom, but smaller than the Oasis class, which is the largest of the classes. Uh, the Quantum class has basically now four ships. It has the, the Quantum of the Seas, it has the Anthem of the Seas, it has the Ovation, and the newly one that just came out, the Spectrum. Okay. And these ships are basically, well, two of them are in Asia full time. Yeah. They were built for the sort of the Chinese market or the Asian market. Yeah. And, uh, and then the other two, the Anthem and the Ovation, uh, are going to be in, in the U.S. pretty much, U.S. and Europe pretty much, yeah. Although the Ovation is going to Alaska and it will be the largest cruise ship in Alaska next year. Wow. Yeah, yeah, the Ovation. Then you get to the really big boys, yeah, or girls, because ships are women. Right? <laughs> they the, are. They're female. Ships are female, by the way. Yeah. And I'll tell you why later. <laughs> well, maybe it's one of your questions, okay? We'll see. We'll see about that. The, the Oasis class. The Oasis class was really the, the class that revolutionized the entire cruising industry. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody has come close, no other cruise line has been able to replicate the size of an Oasis class ship. They come in at 225,000 tons, and that's by far the largest. And uh, Oasis was the first one in the class. Mm -hmm. Then you had Allure, then you had Harmony, and the newest one is the Symphony. Now, interesting how each of the Oasis class ships, they did this on purpose. They made each one a little bit bigger than the other one. Right. Like the Allure is two inches longer, the Harmony is three inches, and the Symphony is maybe six. So that they could all claim to be the largest cruise ship in the world. Right. And currently, the Symphony of the Seas is the largest cruise ship in the world. And base, it's based out of Miami, doing seven-day Caribbeans year-round. So this actually leads us into our next question from a creator. All right. We have Matt with Royal Caribbean Blog. Let's see what he wants to know. Hey Mario, it's Matt. I was just curious, what was your first Oasis class ship? And when you went on your first Oasis class ship, what did you think of it? After all those years of cruising, going on an Oasis class must have been, even for someone like yourself that's cruised so much, quite an adventure. I'm just curious what you remember from trying your first Oasis class ship. Thanks, buddy. I first went on Oasis of the Seas when she came out in November of 2009. Great memory. Okay, now. They invited me to come to the pre-inaugural, the pre-maiden voyage. So I, I did a two-day pre-inaugural, free cruise, open bar, <laughs> okay? I, I booked the maiden voyage, of course, so I stayed on the ship. I did the two-day pre, and then I, I did the maiden voyage and, and stayed three more weeks. So I was four, four weeks plus on the Oasis. And I tell you, I truly, I was, I was completely taken, blown away by it. I mean, completely blown away. We talked about it before, Oasis class ships revolutionized the entire cruising uh, experience. I mean, what you saw in the Oasis was something totally in a new dimension, totally a different dimension. It was Central Park with all the trees and the shrubberies and everything. I mean, an amazing venue, unbelievable. The, the boardwalk with the carousel, and all the little, you know, uh, little places alongside the, the boardwalk. Uh, the Aqua Theater, the, uh, the Aqua Show, an amazing thing, never been seen on a cruise ship. Um, the, the, the number of pool decks, that there are pools on the pool deck. Yeah. I'm, you know, like five, five pools on the pool deck, never seen that before. Um, the Rising Tide Bar the bar that goes up from the Royal Promenade all the way up to Central Park and then back down again, you know. I know it sounds gimmicky, but it, it's cool. It's a cool thing to, to, to ride the Rising Tide Bar. Uh, then they have the zip line where you can zip along the top of the boardwalk. Uh, so to me, it was like a different cruising to a different dimension on the Oasis class. I really liked it. I really liked the Oasis class. Uh, it was the first Izumi on the fleet, by the way, the Japanese restaurant yeah. on, the, on the Oasis of the Seas. So I really liked it and uh, 
And then the next year, I went on the Allure, which was Oasis 2, and I did the same thing. I booked it, uh, except this time I booked six months on it. <laughs> <laughs> you liked it so much. <laughs> I liked it so much, I did six months, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, uh, the experience was, was truly, truly uh, uh, amazing, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I think that covers uh, the section for ship questions and uh, some logistics in the fleet and everything like that. Okay. So thank you so much for diving into that with us and exploring all of it. Our next section is going to be about food and diet and health. So if you're interested in that section, look out for that as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more and ciao, ciao for, for now. now.